empower me. Wow. Wisdom over wounds. August 20th. Christ awareness. And I will give you rest. Matthew 11:28. Whenever anything begins to disintegrate your life with Jesus Christ, turn to him at once, asking him to reestablish your rest. Never allow anything to remain in your life that is causing the unrest. Think of every detail of your life that is causing the disintegration as something to fight against not as something you should allow to remain. Ask the Lord to put awareness of himself in you and your self-awareness will disappear. Then he will be your all in all. Beware of allowing your self-awareness to continue because slowly but surely it will awaken self-pity and self-pity is satanic don't allow yourself to stay well they have just misunderstood me and this is something over which they should be apologizing to me I'm sure I must have this cleared up with them already. Learn to leave others alone regarding this. Simply ask the Lord to give you Christ awareness and he will steady you until your completeness in him is absolute. A complete life is the life of a child. When I am fully conscious of my awareness of Christ, there is something wrong. It is the sick person who really knows what health is. A child of God is not aware of the will of God because he is the will of God. When we have deviated even slightly from the will of God, we began to ask, Lord, what is your will? A child of God never prays to be made aware of the fact that God answers prayer because he is so restfully certain that God always answers prayer. If we try to overcome our self-awareness through any of our own common sense methods, we will only serve to strengthen our self-awareness tremendously. Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest. That is Christ awareness will take the place of self-awareness. Wherever Jesus comes, he establishes rest. The rest of the completion of activity in our lives that is never aware of itself. Wow, what a simple word wisdom over wound christ awareness matthew chapter 11 verse 28 and i will give you rest hallelujah 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 feeling a hallelujah in my spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah is the most high praise. Hallelujah. We give you praise right now. Father, we want to have Christ awareness, not self-awareness. We want you to come and dwell in us so much to where we know automatically that you are dwelling in the middle of us. Father, I thank you for your children today, your sons and your daughters that are online with me right now. Father, I thank you that some of them on here are so tired of struggling, tired of trying to figure things out, trying to make ends meet, trying to provide for their family, trying to give the children nice things like the other children have, trying to have a complete meal and a healthy meal. Father, some of them just want to go to sleep and rest. Father, I thank you because you said in your word, come unto me and I will give you rest. Father, I know that you are rest for the weary. That word weary means extremely tired. I'm not just talking about tired because you haven't gone to sleep at night. Because you could have a full night's sleep and still wake up tired. If I was uh, in the room, would you be like, how many of you could raise your hands and let me see you wake up tired. You went to bed tired and you wake up tired because in your mind, you're wrestling against something all night long. I want you to know that the enemy comes to steal your rest. He comes to steal everything. You can have all the money in the world and still not be able to rest. I remember hearing the testimony of a pro, I believe he was a football player, many years ago. And he had come to the Lord and gave his life to Christ. And he was talking about how people misunderstand money. It doesn't matter how many cars you have in your garage or how many houses that you have. And he said something that got my attention. He said, you can have a mansion full of beds and still cannot sleep. The point he was making was that you can only sleep in one bed at a time. Drive one car at a time. Eat one meal at a time. And so after a while, it doesn't really matter how many items you have because you can only enjoy them one at a time. And he began to talk about how he could not sleep at night. And until he found the Lord, it didn't matter going from room to room and bed to bed and mattress to mattress. And he had no rest for his weary soul. Father, right now I speak to your children because you said I give sweet sleep to my children. Ha, hallelujah. Thank you for rest. Pain loose right now. The children of the Lord deserve rest. 
Father, I thank you that you are the provider. And I thank you that you always provide for our needs. Not just wants, but needs. But what I've discovered so many times is that you've tried to lead your people and lead your children to a place to where they can have rest. It's just a place of provision where you are the provider. We love to sing a song, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. His grace is sufficient for me. Is God your provider? Have you allowed him to become your provider? Are you struggling in your self-awareness instead of your Christ awareness and making sure you run into the left and run into the right, trying to get more and more and more? I've discovered that when God is guiding your footsteps, sometimes As they like to say, sometimes misfortunes can be a blessing in disguise. Sometimes no can be a blessing. Sometimes go can be a blessing. Don't just sit by the river after the provision is gone. I think I've shared before that when I start going through some things in my latter years, I had just a red and white book. Looked like it could have been a phone book. I don't even know where the little red and white book came from, but I like to collect pretty books and writing books. And I heard the Lord speak to me and say, Barbara, sit by the river, just like he told another prophet. He said, and watch me provide for you. And every time You see the provision. I want you to write it down in the book so that you will remember the blessings. And God began to move me and restructure me. And I would sit there when I'd see something and I'd realize, wow, that was a blessing. I didn't have any Food And I looked outside and I heard somebody opening up my gate. And a minister and his wife were walking through the gate. And they had arms full of food and bags. And I said, where are you guys going? They're like, we're coming over here. Because the Lord commanded us to bring this to you. We had so much. I didn't tell anybody I needed some stuff. But God knows the things that you have need of even before you ask. I remember that day so clearly that I was like, wow, thank you, God. I remember after I moved from Los Angeles up back up to Bakersfield and I was in the house and I was doing all kinds of things and I hadn't gone to buy any groceries and stuff and I love banana nut muffins and I kept thinking I need to stop and go get me some groceries and I had on my list some banana nut muffins and this is going to bless somebody (laughs) I had been busy And so I had these gates on my house. You couldn't get in closer, knock on the door. I'd have to know that you were coming. And so some of my friends had discovered that I had moved back to Bakersfield, my childhood friend. I'm going to tell on them right now, Lorene and Lorraine. They were twins. They are twins. And I love you guys so much if you're listening. But apparently Lorene and Lorraine had gone shopping and wanted to bless me with some stuff a welcome back to the neighborhood gift and they had tried to reach me couldn't reach me finally my neighbor bill said well lorraine and lorraine are trying to reach you and i go oh they are and so 
I called them and I believe it was Loreen that answered the phone. I said, have you been trying? She said, girl, we've been trying to reach you for days. We bought you some stuff that we wanted to give you. And I still hadn't been to the store yet. So we crossed the alley. She said, come on in. And, and I went in through the back door. And uh, you know, you don't hardly go into your neighbor's house. I go, it's so pretty in here. And when I walked in, she said, oh, we bought some stuff for you. But for some reason, we bought you this big package of banana nut muffins i was like oh how did you know i love these i was saying it to the lord lord i sure want a banana nut muffin i wasn't thinking about a lot of them i was thinking about one (laughs) they had bought me a giant pack of banana nut muffins Oh, and it bought me some other things to bless me. Some gloves for working out in the yard. and I mean, they had just bought some things. It looked like the Spirit of God came upon them and said, Buy these things for Barbara. We fellowshiped for a while, and then I took my arm full of goodies back to my room, to my house, and I just began to praise God, just like the prophet who sat next to the river, the word of God says, I com- he commanded the ravens to feed the prophet morning and night. The ravens came and brought him meat and he had water. And you know, sometimes you get into these situations where you find yourself like, oh, I'm, I don't know what's going on, but God told me to come here and I'm here and I'm in obedience. And let God show you that he knows your name. Let God show you that he knows you. Let God show you that you didn't come to a bad place when he said, come, follow me all to Jesus I surrender do you really surrender to the Lord let Christ so dwell in you by the way thank you for those of you who are subject to the spirit of God I shared about another time my friend Karen had hosted a big party for I believe it was still Pacific Bell and came home and brought all the leftovers and stuff and that next morning I woke up and I was like Lord I don't have any food in my house what am I going to do and I heard the Lord say something so strange to me he said go outside my natural mind I'm not talking about spiritual mind my natural mind was like go outside early in the morning go outside I'm still in my pajamas go outside so I'm arguing with the Lord I don't know none of y'all I guess y'all don't do that the spirit of God I'm like I don't want to go outside it's cold outside and I heard the Lord again say go outside and I went on and said okay opened my front door and saw something sitting on I had a little chair that God had commanded me to sit out sit it on my porch it was a swing and a foster care group was across the street little boys and they would see me and they would come and laugh and talk and and then the caretakers would make them leave me alone I said leave them alone they're fine one in particular would sneak over there and hide behind my wall I look outside and he'd be sitting and swinging on my bench he'd always want to talk I'd take him out cookies and spaghetti whatever I had because the Lord said let the children come over and you sit and talk with them I wasn't a child molester so finally they called me they got my number and they said is he over here I said yeah he's sitting on the porch you just can't see him and they're like he's bothering you I said no he's not bothering me at all I said, I gave him some spaghetti and some garlic bread and stuff. He's fine. He just wanted to talk. 
And they said, okay, well, he could stay and just send him on home. So I would do that often, but I had that little swing sitting out there for the children to come and sit and talk with me. And sometimes I'd read them stories and read them books that they had never uh, heard of, but I'd sit and read to them and then send them on home. And when I stepped out that morning and looked out on the porch, sitting on my little swing was a big giant tray wrapped in foil. I've shared this once before with some people, but I looked at it and it had a note on there and it said, Hi, boo-boo. I have a lot of nicknames. It said, Hi, boo-boo. I'm on my way to work and I decided to bring this and drop it off. I ran a big office party yesterday and all of this was left over and it's way too much for me to eat I cannot throw it away and and I hope you enjoy it oh my god I picked up that tray and it was heavy Carrie it looked around nobody was out there carried it on back in the house and set it on the table and talking about a provider I opened up that tray, and it had all my favorites on there. I love barbecue ribs. Barbecue ribs, chicken, links, cherry tomatoes, pickles, cheeses, different types of breads. I mean, it was just full, nicely packaged beautiful i began to weep and said lord i thank you you are a provider you're always aware of us even when we're hungry even when we don't have any money i want you to know that i lived off of that food for a week I'm so thankful for Miss Karen who loved me and took care of me every opportunity when I no longer wanted to live. I no longer wanted to fellowship. God sent some beautiful women of God to take care of me and make sure I didn't leave this earth. Karen Holmes was her last name. She was friends of my godmother, Marietta Davis, and several others. Carolyn, they took care of me. They didn't know me. They had just met me. But the Lord had them keep me alive and all of their family members. I praise God for all of you, the men, the women. They carried me to the hospital, to the doctor, had lots of surgery during that time. They would feed me and take care of me, put me to bed, lock me in my house and go on about their business. So I thank God for how he'll send people that you don't even know to come and take care of you. They didn't know me, but they took care of me. I had grandmas and nieces and nephews and cousins that came to see about me. Praise God. Even when your children have to be gone on about, God will give you God children and loved ones who love you. They don't even know why. Gregory would water my lawn every day because I couldn't go outside. Water the lawn. I praise God for the children across the street. When I left, I never saw them again. But I thank God that he gave me the opportunity when I was there to minister to the needs. You need to stop and look around and see where has God sent you? And who is there? to receive a blessing from you. My cousins, elder and sister figures, Brenda and Robert, 
and all the children. I praise God for you. I don't care what nobody has to say. Brenda's my first cousin. And she loves me and I love her. That's my sister. And I thank you for always being obedient and coming to see about me. So many of you I cannot call by name right now, but I'm sure when God gives me the unction, I will. Oh, taste and see that the Lord, He is good. He has plans for you and you don't have plans for yourself. God wants you to loose the self-awareness and take on the image of Christ. Christ awareness is the message today. Matthew 11, 28. And I will give you rest. Empower me, Lord. Wow. Wisdom over wounds. I hope this word blesses you today. And if it blesses you, share it with someone else. I give God the glory and the praise. For he is worthy of all praise. This is Sister Barbara. God bless you. Have a great day.